This Asian TikToker is disappointed by her 23andMe DNA results. Let's talk about maybe why. That's so great. You got 100%. That's like A+. Plus. Let's run the clip. <laughs> Boom! That is the viral TikTok from Shirley Fied. Um, Andrew, does it seem like she's disappointed to find out that she's 100% Southern Chinese? Man, she's disappointed she's not woman jing. No, I'm just kidding. But like, yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people... Uh, I, I feel like a lot of people share this sentiment when they take 23 Me. I'm not going to lie. Because a lot of people kind of like to think that they're mixed in some way because being mixed is considered cool in 2024, right? Especially in America, this is probably like the most mixed country yeah. on earth, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, in Brazil, maybe. I'm just saying she's probably slightly disappointed she's not even mixed Asian. I'm not saying she wishes she was European necessarily or, or black or whatever. I'm just saying she probably thought she was other types of Asian. Right, right, right. So she probably was figuring, I'm thinking what? Viet, Filipino, Korean, Japanese. I'm thinking in my mind, that's what she's looking yeah, for. Yeah, and I would say based on her TikTok, and I've taken a look at her face, yeah, I could see how she might have thought she was part Vietnamese. I've seen her eat pho. She clearly likes pho. Maybe maybe she thought she was part Viet, but I guess she's not according to 23andMe. So we're going to talk about why Shirley Fied might have been disappointed that she turned out to be 100% Chinese. Right, so you were saying that uh, today you're going to be reading between the lines, trying to say sp speak the unspoken. Yeah, maybe trying to explain what maybe she didn't want to say. All right, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, guys. You're not getting this deep cut psychoanalysis anywhere else. <laughs> uh, real quick, man, I always got to do this breakdown. I've done it before, but Andrew, there's four main types of Asians. Okay. Here, let's just take a look at bar number one. Andrew, this is your most, no, most northern type of Asian, Siberian Asians. Yep. Uh, Andrew, it splits east to west. The Western ones, they look more Hun-like, Tatar, Kazakh. The ones on the Eastern side look super Mongolian, almost more Asian than even an Asian looks. Like right. we're talking about like an ultra Asian Eskimo look. Sure. Moving on, number two, Andrew. Number two is your typical East Asian. This is the one you see in America a lot. It splits East to West too. Chinese on one side and then Japanese and Koreans on another side. Obviously, the main racial component that makes everybody sort of look the same here is a Yellow River farmer gene. However, in uh, Korea, they have more of a Siberian mix with the Yellow Farmer gene. In Japan, they're mixed again after that mix with Ainu and Homan, one is kind of like, I guess, Russian-esque looking and one is Islander looking. Mm. Then and we get into Thai Kadai. Thai Kadai are essentially mainland Southeast Asians, not maritime, right? Mainland Southeast Asians that probably originally traced their bloodlines to Southern China, but either got pushed or left into more of the tropical zone thousands of years ago. Andrew, a lot of Cantonese are mixed with Thai Kadai. Right, right, right. And then last but not least, Andrew, number four, you've got Austronesian. This is the flow of Austronesians out of uh, Taiwan and Southern, way, way Southern, what was then China into like, you know, into all the way to Guam, Polynesia, and this is more of a brown Asian, Indonesian, Malay, Filipino. Right, right. So now that we've established that there are pretty much four main types of East Asians or, you know. Mongoloids. Mongoloid Asians. I don't, I, I wish there was another word than mongoloid, but we'll just rock with that word for now. You guys, let us know if there's a better word than mongoloid. Oriental Asian? I don't know about that. Anyways, maybe. Uh, anyways, let's talk about uh, reasons why she might feel disappointed that she's 100% Chinese. Obviously, the content, I'm not saying she hates being Chinese, but she was like, oh, I paid $100 just to find out I'm 100% Chinese. It doesn't I seem like she's doing anything Chinese on her TikTok, though. Yeah. But She's not I, doing other Asian things. I get it. Listen, you pay a, a private investigator. You want to find something out about your spouse, right? <laughs> right. You're saying you're paying all this money and then it's just like, yeah, it's going to work. Yeah. Anyways, uh, point number one, David, uh, it is not cool or exclusive to be 100% Chinese right now, right? right That's right. kind of the feeling. I mean, I feel like it's been this way our whole lives. Like, even when I was young, I remember at church, like, kids wanted to be Japanese. Kids, uh, the urban kids wanted to be Filipino. Later at church, kids wanted to be Korean because, I mean, there's a reason. I mean, what, Andrew, China is like, the 1.4 billion population, right? And it's known for being a little bit more of an old school culture 
in comparison to even Japan, Korea, Vietnam, or Philippines. Like they all have some embracement of, I guess, modern Western pop culture or mannerisms in a way that would you agree in China does not have those things? Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, if you are into the pop culture of Korea or you have a bunch of Vietnamese friends or you like Japanese They're stuff, more lit. Yeah, of course you're going to want to wish that you wouldn't mind. You'd be like, ah, oh, it'd be cool if I was like actually that type of person a little bit, even one or 2%, it would make me feel better. But now that she pretty much found out that she was a 100% Southern Chinese, essentially right. Cantonese from Guangdong, and she's probably like, I don't know, like, I don't listen to like Canto pop, mm. like, you know? You know, I always knew when I want to get street lit, I go with the Viets. When I want to get chic lit, I go with the Koreans. I always knew I wanted to be lit. What? There's something inside of me that is creating that feeling. Oh, uh, um, the, the, we, all right. Let me just get to this one. She said, when my aunt did this, it said 98% Irish, 2% Scandinavian. And then she started telling everybody that we were Scandinavian. Oh, so this Irish girl said her aunt found out she was Scandinavian and then tried to switch the identities because obviously being Scandinavian is considered more better looking, cooler right? than... Uh, being Irish or whatever. Right, because right? I, I guess they got Scandinavian design. Nobody's ever like saying, I want a, a, a couch that's like Irish design, right? Irish beer though. Right, right, right. So it's true Irish that different, gin. being parts of different groups have like different connotations. And that's why yeah. even Shay Mitchell, for her and her world, and her, Shay Mitchell trying to go with Spanish, yeah. not with Filipino, because right, right. it's more beneficial in the world she is. Uh, there's this comment here that says, humans are opportunistic because even our hominid ancestors were even before language was created. Basically, Andrew, people are trying to like be more up their status by picking a cooler thing, right? No, even I, if it's a smaller percentage or something. Listen, I don't necessarily blame her for feeling that way. It is very, very human to do that. But it's also like, uh, you can be proud of being Chinese. Come on now. Or you can make it cooler yourself too. But I get it. It feels like right now in 2024, being Chinese is almost antithetical to being cool. Point number two, being mixed is especially prized in America, which is a hyper recently mixed countries in a way similar to Brazil. There are some other smaller mixed countries around the world, but it's more mixed with whites because there was a bunch of comments saying, I'm so American. It's weird to see anybody more than 40% anything. Right, because this girl is an American white girl, and a lot of American whites, obviously, they're actually mixed with different types of Europeans. Native uh, American, a little Native bit. American. Right. So, of course, she's like, I don't know, I'm probably 40% Danish, British, da 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 da. And uh, yeah, I think that in China, if you took a DNA test and found out you were 100% Chinese, you might not feel super special either, but you would just be like, yeah, it is what it is. I, that's what I expected, you know? It'd probably be more... Right, you're, saying, guess, you're saying underneath the backdop of a hypermixed country, it seems too boring. Right, right. I mean, you know, people in America like to say they're mixed, you know? Right, there's been people saying cool. they're Native American, Andrew, and they're not even actually Native American. Right. Right. Uh, point number three, Andrew, just because it says 100% Southern Chinese, it still doesn't mean that that's actually the real data because 23andMe doesn't get granular enough for Asian populations because most of their reference data set and data pools are from the Western world. Yeah, and you know what I mean by this is that, yes, if you were to plug your same to DNA data to a different database, like an Asian database, it might come up with something a little bit different, to be honest. And I think just generally speaking, like I think a lot of other types of Asians will come up as part Chinese too. So it doesn't mean that they're, or like, you know, like I've seen like Vietnamese or Filipino people also turn up as 100% Filipino or Vietnamese. But what does that right. fully mean? What does it fully mean to be 100% right, right, Southern right. Chinese? So it doesn't mean that you're not partially related to other people it just means like the way that 23andme has categorized things it's not showing up if yet. she took the info which is the haplo group analytics and plugged it into we gene i know some people are like oh i don't trust it whatever anyway let's just say you, it's good right it's going to give you hyper granular data so for example maybe she doesn't feel mixed but if she's part haka part chiu jiao and part canto and part toy san zong san hawk san whatever it is is she going to feel do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, those are all different tribes that have some different behaviors. Haka's got the circle house. Other people don't got the circle house. So, I mean, it could, it is different. I yeah. don't know, but it just, if you get into it, I, right? I, and then point number four, I would say another reason why she probably is a little disappointed is that she, 
as a Chinese American might not relate to the larger Chinese identity right now. What is known to be the mainland Chinese identity, uh, whether it be like Sichuan food mala and spicy, tongs. mala, you know, mala spices and the Xi'an food and hand pulled noodles and all the Northern food. And maybe she doesn't relate to that at all. Maybe she doesn't speak Mandarin. Maybe she only knows a little bit of Cantonese. Mm. And so if you're a Cantonese American, I can see how you don't, you almost relate to the mainland Chinese stuff as a very Cantonese American, almost as much as like, I don't want to say a non-Chinese person would, but essentially you don't see yourself as the same exact culture yeah. as the larger yeah, Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think that that is actually one of the complexities if you really want to get that deep into it of being Canto because it's kind of like a transition point to Southeast Asia's. But I think that that allows you to enjoy Southeast Asian diaspora cuisine oftentimes heavily Chinese influenced yeah. over the past couple hundred yeah, years. Yeah, and, and I mean, some people, obviously we understand Cantonese the as a language is uh, slowly decreasing as far as usage wise, right? Because right. like the, the, it's not being promoted. It's not a lingua franca. So of, of actually of a big country outside of Hong Kong, right? And it's like, so maybe Cantonese uh, people kind of feel uh, like a little bit more of a uh, more, and I don't want to say minority group, but a minority population. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel, I do feel that there's some like sense of like we're being eliminated. So we need to have a stronger separation or something like that. I will say this. I actually think for the young Gen Z kids, it's more about, it seems like as a group, Chinese people try to be cool or lit less than other Asians. I think in my opinion, I know what you were just saying. It comes to the, you know, the cumin Roja more, but I'm saying it almost is more about the litness, in my opinion. Right, right, right. Okay. Right, because I just think that it seems like other Asians hit more of the lit checklist. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Chinese yeah, are the yeah. least lit. Yeah. Maybe of any group with money on earth, to be I honest. I mean, listen, again, identity can be very shallow and very deep. And it can be as shallow as I want to be related to the cooler group. And then it can be as deep as, well, I can trace my roots back five, six generations here. Right, right, right. Uh, point number five, Andrew, she was told that she looks mixed growing up, uh, whether she looks Latina or Southeast Asian or something else, and that made her feel exotic, but then you're taking that feeling of exoticness. Oh, 23andMe robbed her of that exotic oh. image of herself. Well, the, yeah, I'm just assuming that throughout her life, because she ca does kind of look like she could be part Southeast Asian or even part Latina, uh, you know, visually speaking, that's just how we are scanning her face because we are not a DNA test. Our eyeballs, well, a lot of people don't understand that our human eyeballs are not a DNA test. We, we are think just, it is, though. We think it is, but we just look at somebody and we look at a black person and be like, hey, are you part Asian? Because your eyes are kind of small. And then, and then they were like, yeah, but, my, uh, you, but they're not Asian at all. Dr. Like, Umar Johnson, his eyes look kind of Asian. Yeah, or like Joe Biden has small <laughs> eyes. Like yeah. He's not Asian. So I guess like uh, it's just what we think but so i'm pretty sure she was asked if she was maybe mixed or a different type of asian and you know now she finds out she's 100 percent chinese and in her heart she has to say no i'm just chinese but she don't have to say it like that right uh point number six andrew there's some other famous uh people who came out Andrew conan o'brien came out as 100 percent irish pewdiepie also 100 percent scandinavian right yeah, I mean, those guys are also purebreds, according to 23 I, I would say the Conan one is pretty unsurprising because he was, like, making jokes about it his 20-year career, right? right. Uh, point number seven, Andrew. In a way, genetics, it really doesn't mean anything functionally in 2024 uh, in terms of external impacts on yourself, but it does tie back to history, which I guess could internally impact you. Ooh. So, basically, obviously, for this girl in particular, was her name Shirley Fod, right? She's good looking. Is her, is it, you know, is it right or wrong? Her being above average attractiveness is the most important thing to her sociality. Not being, oh, I'm not mixed. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Because there's like a comment in the thing being like, hey, I'm Brazilian. Can I mix with you? Purebred. You know what I mean? Because I'm saying that it's like, I guess what I'm saying is she, so she, let's say for example, she, she, she's good looking, right? Isn't, is anybody going to be like, oh, I'm not going to message her now because she's not mixed Oh, no. No, no, no. It doesn't... Like, essentially, if you're considered good-looking, your race matters less. Especially if you're a girl. Especially if you're a girl, yeah. Uh, and, but I'm saying that, to be fair, it does tie back to history and genealogy and this movement of these uh, tribes and haplogroups before there was nation-states. But I'm saying that it can affect self-identity. And so, I'll tell you this. 
it can impact your self-identity, how you see yourself, and how you see yourself sometimes can make you switch a, a read when there's a fork in the road. Do you see what yes. I'm saying? Like, it can affect how you feel about yourself. Yeah. It's not like the external world is going to treat you different. Right. Unless you're, like, looking to get a blood quantum to get a Native American tax credit or, like, go to Israel or something. Right, right. Right. Then, obviously, yeah, it would come into play. So, also this, Andrew. This girl said, I'm 93% indigenous american i'm six percent indigenous mexican and one percent sardinian but i always thought i was asian this whole time this girl was a uh, native american oh, primarily okay. and yeah. the funny thing is andrew if we look at the flow of how native americans and indigenous latin americans came to be they came out of asia a long time ago right so Very when you look at people ago. in the especially like the amazon or like in the waterways of like peru or something like that they look super asian Right, visually, but yeah, yeah, they look like they're from. But but they won't show up on a test. Eskimo, and, they look I, And we're not saying they're Asian because they came from Asia fifty thousand years ago. I don't think that necessarily makes you Asian. But but there are Mongoloid. I think there's 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 common ancestral roots. They have dry earwax, wide feet, and shovel shaped incisors. Yeah. So I mean, anyway, guys, that's just how I just explaining something. It's like it's like that's true, and like you said. What does it mean in 2024? I don't know if it means anything, but it's just interesting info to know. Ultimately, I'll say this, man. Um, yeah, listen, guys, I, I would say this, man. These type of things, I feel like people care and they don't care, but they're just trying to get something viral out of like maybe a tiny third tier feeling that they have, like a throwaway feeling. Yeah, no, but but it's a relatable feeling, and I think that's why it hit and got a lot of views. It's really not that serious. I mean, you know, listen, we guys, we just analyzed it probably way too much. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you can take pride that you're a purebred. You know, in such a, you could even say in such a mixed world, being a purebred is even less common now. But uh, I would say, like, yeah, everything identity changes so much you know her being southern chinese she might feel different about being chinese than if she was northern chinese or she whatever it can be and identity dude the identity conversations that we're having today are going to be pretty different 40 years from now in another generation right because people are even going to be more mixed and then you're going to have to be like have all these conversations again and then right. how are people going to discriminate against each other and whatever feel some type of way and then who's going to be cool on the tv or like hologram screens in 40 years i don't know what race is gonna be maybe it's a robot right right maybe it's a person who looks literally like five different ethnicities in one or like only cyborgs are gonna be attractive like you gotta be 30 percent cyborg oh like if you look 20 percent <laughs> robot like damn man i'm trying to look 20 percent robotic no ah! there, there was this one character called seven on like star trek way back in the day i'll, I'll pop up that girl she was a hot cyborg oh man what uh, if part klingon people start looking good i don't know yeah vulcans you know star trek basically dude what if you true. gotta start looking part like an animal and then you're considered i don't know what it's gonna be in the future i'll say this too like i feel like a lot of people we look for permission to be cool from like our group you know what i'm saying like oh i'm part of this group this i'm part jamaican i could be good at music now or i'm part like korean i'm good at like doing k-pop you know what i'm saying but i'm saying like you could be the first person in your group in a way that's even more impactful and more important mm -hmm. if you're from a group that's like not known for trying particularly putting their efforts or their focus on a certain er arena of life right yeah, so that's what I think. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Have you taken 23 of me? What were your results? Did it mean anything? Did it change how you saw yourself? Does how you see yourself impact your decisions in life? Let us know what you think. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.